Hey everybody, gonna make a couple adjustments to my trusty eight gallon brew kettle today with my false bottom. I need to get this to try to sit just a little bit lower. So here we go. I think I have all the tools out here to get this thing done today. I did pick up this socket to fit this, this weldless insert that I have for this uh, tri-clamp. This to hold it in place. Um, so I have my rethread kit out here too, so I'm just going to kind of take you through real quick what I'm what I'm trying to do. Um, I have about a quarter of an inch gap between the false bottom and the nut on this weldless insert. And then if you look on my kettle here, the way that this nut is oriented, I think I'm going to just turn the whole insert where I can get this on the flat. So we'll do that here. Come on, beautiful. Let's show the world. <laughs> Hi, did you did I get ambushed? Did I get ambushed? Yes. Who are those cupcakes yes. for? Everybody. Do I, do I get ambushed? Are you dying? Did I get ambushed by shop dog? Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. Again, this effort's going to be a two-fold piece. I'm going to try to lower my studs on this. I have some different bolts. Right now, I have about a quarter of an inch between my false bottom and the top of the nut. And once I rotate that flat, I'll gain about another quarter of an inch. With this kettle, I have about, off my measuring stick, a half gallon is about a half inch, and I'm able to recover a half inch. So that gives me another half gallon of water. And I'll go into that here in a second. I think we'll tackle this first with getting this insert rotated. Take my element out. Very nice. Take my gasket off because I don't want to wreck that. What I'm going to do here is I know this is tight right now, so I want to see how far I need to rotate this. Or like, if I hold this in place, then how am I going to be able to tighten on the other side without just kind of like guessing three times and ruining my gasket? Right now, straight up, I'm actually on the on one of the crests, and I'm looking here that that'll be a flat. So I'm just going to make myself a mark, loosen it, and rotate it, and then clamp it back down. Hopefully, it's just that simple. You know what? I'm gonna take a peek at this gasket one. That looks that's in good shape. Okay. Right now I'm just rotating to where my mark is up and I'm go ahead and crank this thing back down. And just as I demonstrated in my, my actual video mounting this thing, all I'm doing is using this to protect the using this to protect the insert. Yeah, I still gotta hold it in place so I can tighten. Just a real quick thing, not really an issue. I'll go ahead and just crank this down until it's pretty tight. Now um, I'm on the flat, or at least hopefully on the flat enough. We'll see when I get back into this. I'm not going to put the element back in. I want to see where I sit with uh, getting my standoffs. Uh, this is a piece I got from brewhardware.com. No, they're not sponsoring me or anything like that. I just think it's worth mentioning because it's a really nice product, not overly expensive, and uh, I've had a handful of brews on this and it's performed really well so uh, 
the standoffs on here, surprisingly, uh, are, are metric and not, not standard, uh, which was interesting. But uh, so I used my rethread kit to determine that it's a uh, number eight. It's the only reason I have the, the rethread kit out right now. And being that I also need stainless steel bolts with a stainless steel false bottom, I picked this up from Albany Fasteners. No, they're not sponsoring me or anything either. Uh, it's just I go to them. I found them online a while back just because they make black stainless fasteners, which I like to buy for the motorcycle. Um, and they have metric, uh, metric stainless. I ended up getting two different sizes since it is metric. Uh, right now, these studs are, they measure out from the bottom of the, the actual cap on the screw at three and a half, which roughly sets the, you know, they, they sell this as three and a quarter um, for the false bottom. You know, nothing wrong with the kit that I bought or anything like that. Just my unique situation with my kettle. I need to make an adjustment. So, so by my counts, I did the conversion on Google. I think it came out at 76 millimeters is how long I would need in order to, to drop a half of an inch. They don't make a 76. They, uh, so I ended up buying a 70 and an 80. I think I'm going to start with the 80 and just see where it lines up at. Because I, I would like it if these you know, would flush out like all the way in and then sit right where I want. Obviously, I, I cannot put a, a center one in there because my helmet's in the way. Not an issue because four works just fine. All right, so these were again these were the 80 millimeter. Uh, the way this goes in, I have to you know come in under all my. My ports and most importantly is like the more delicate thermal probes in there. Okay, that actually, good thing I got the longer ones because 80 puts it, it's actually got a little bit of a gap there. See here I have the, the 80 millimeter bolts in there. It's resting right on my, on the flat. So it's good I got my flat. Check that for leaks in a minute here. For comparison, this is this is the old studs. I'm sitting at. I mean that is just a smidgen below four inches. I could get technical on you. About three and seven eighths, right, right at the grate. And then this is back with the with the new 80 millimeter studs. Again, sitting sitting right on there. It, still stable it's just this one spot that's not quite touching so i am at three and five eight so it's really only gaining about a quarter maybe actually over here i'm at three and a half so not exactly what i was hoping to gain it's probably close to a half gallon, but I, I wouldn't say it would be a clean half gallon gain. But it's something. Helmet back on there. Snug this up for a second and we'll rotate it. Things to think about with this. I didn't, didn't quite gain what I was hoping, but I did gain some, and I'm going to take every bit I can get. If I would have went with a different insert on this, I probably could have got the element just a little bit lower in the kettle. Like if I did a, uh, if I did their, their solder insert, or if I just direct mounted it. And that was a, that was a toss up. I wanted the tri-clover so I could take the element out. It's a lot nicer for cleaning. Uh, and obviously in situations like this where I need to remove it, uh, I think the only way I would have gained anything, again, is if I would have actually done the, the solder, and I don't know how much that would be. Okay, that wraps this piece up. Uh, gain a little bit of space, not quite what I was hoping for, but something. 
and you know things to think about if you know when you're looking at all grain brewing and you're looking at electric in in this kind of scenario uh, it's always good to have the element as low as possible uh, in the kettle especially in this case being that this is a very uh, small kettle and I don't have a lot of head space in this so um, to go into the explanation, the backstory to this of why I'm trying to gain this is even though I have the water volume in here, I speak to it in my previous video in my e in a bag session, even though the water volume's in there and I'm recirculating and it works and everything, it's, it's a really thick mash. So again, it works from a water standpoint, but like basically doing in that malt bill, it's, it's really thick and it's kind of challenging and I'd like to... I'd like to gain some of that back and pop if possible. With this, the I want to say I've been successful up to about a quart per pound, which is a pretty stiff mash. You could totally do that. It's uh, not uncommon, but you know, by gaining that extra that extra piece, that that ratio of of grain to water, obviously is going to increase for me. I found with this kettle I can't do a high gravity beer because of this space and that you know that water to grist ratio, which is not really an issue. One, I don't typically brew a lot of high gravity beers, and so I could just switch this over. I just have to go from brewing a bag now to, to using my cooler again, which I've already done in one of my brew sessions. But for this, trying to get that space back in brewing a bag was my goal today, and we have done that. So keep watching the channel. I got more things to come and hit that like and subscribe and thanks for watching.